Chapter Thirteen of Poison Romance and Poison Mysteries by Charles John Samuel Thompson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Thirteen: The Case of Doctor Pritchard. The remarkable case of Doctor E. W. Pritchard of Glasgow, who was arrested and charged with murdering his wife and mother-in-law in that city in the year eighteen sixty-five excited great interest at the time. The respectable position occupied by the accused man in society in Glasgow, and the practice as a physician which he had been enabled to attain in the course of his six years' residence there, awakened an unusual degree of attention in the public mind when the fact of his apprehension became known. The excitement was strengthened by the mystery invariably attached to the prosecution of all criminal inquiries in Scotland. It appears that for some time previous to her decease, Mrs. Pritchard had been in a delicate state of health, and her mother, Mrs. Taylor, wife of Mr. Taylor, a silk weaver of Edinburgh, had gone to Glasgow to nurse her during her illness. Mrs. Taylor took up her abode in the house of Dr. Pritchard, and ministered to her daughter's comfort. But while so engaged, she became ill, and died suddenly, about three weeks previous to the day on which the accused man was apprehended. The cause of death was assigned to apoplexy, and, as Mrs. Taylor was about seventy years of age, no public attention was awakened, and the body was conveyed to Edinburgh and buried in the Grange Cemetery. Circumstances closely following on this, however, awakened grave suspicions. Mrs. Pritchard died shortly after her mother, and a report was circulated that she had succumbed to gastric fever. The family grave at the Grange was fixed on as the place of interment, and arrangements were made for the funeral without delay. The body was taken to Edinburgh by rail, and Dr. Pritchard accompanied it to the house of his father-in-law, where it was to await interment. The deaths of the two ladies occurring within so short an interval of each other, coupled with certain hints which they had received, set the police on the alert and while Dr. Pritchard was absent in Edinburgh, they instituted inquiries which led to a warrant being issued for his apprehension. On his return to Glasgow, previous to the day fixed for the funeral, he was arrested at the railway station in Queen Street and conveyed to the police offices. Meanwhile, the authorities had transmitted to Edinburgh information of what had been done, and at the same time had issued a warrant for a post-mortem examination of the body of Mrs. Pritchard. This was entrusted to Professor Douglas McLaughlin, assisted by Drs. Arthur Gamgee and Littlejohn. The result of the post-mortem proved that death had not resulted from natural causes, and a subsequent examination disclosed the presence of minute particles of antimony in the liver. The case now assumed a grave and mysterious aspect, and the authorities resolved to carry the investigations further. The next step was to order the exhumation of the body of Mrs. Taylor. This having been effected, the internal organs were submitted to analysis by Professor McLaughlin, Dr. Littlejohn, and Professor Penny of Glasgow, who, after a protracted examination, reported that the death of Mrs. Taylor, like that of her daughter, was due to poisoning by antimony. On these facts being elicited, Dr. Pritchard was fully committed on the charge of murdering Jane Taylor, his mother-in-law, and Mary Jane Pritchard, his wife. The trial was opened on July 3, 1865, at the High Court of Justiciary, Edinburgh, before the Lord Justice Clerk, Lord Ardmillan, and Lord Jervis Wood, the Solicitor General, prosecuting for the Crown, while the prisoner was defended by Messrs. A. R. Clark, Watson, and Brand. Evidence was given that Mrs. Pritchard was first taken ill in the October of 1864 with constant vomiting, often accompanied by severe cramp. After being treated by her husband for some time, and getting no better, at her own request a Dr. Gardner was called in, and her mother, Mrs. Taylor, came from Edinburgh to nurse her. 
while on this visit to her daughter mrs taylor on february twenty fourth complained of feeling unwell the next day she was found insensible sitting on her chair in her daughter's room and died the same night from this time mrs pritchard got gradually worse and died within three weeks afterwards mary mcleod a girl who had been in the service of the prisoner admitted that he had familiar relations with her and that this fact was known to mrs pritchard the doctor had also made her presents and told her he would marry her if his wife died dr patterson a medical practitioner of glasgow who was called in to see mrs taylor stated pritchard told him the old lady was in the habit of taking batley's solution of opium and a few days before her death she had purchased a half-pound bottle when he saw her he was convinced her symptoms betokened that she was under the depressing influence of antimony and not opium he therefore refused to give a certificate of her death pritchard eventually signed the certificate himself stating the primary cause of death had been paralysis and the secondary cause apoplexy he further certified mrs pritchard's death as due to gastric fever it was proved on the evidence of two chemists that pritchard was in the habit of purchasing tartarated antimony in large quantities and also fleming's tincture of aconite dr mclaughlin professor of medical jurisprudence in the university of edinburgh was then called to give the result of the chemical examination of the various organs of the body of mrs pritchard which had been retained for analysis antimony corresponding to one-fourth of a grain of tartar emetic was found in the urine in small quantities in the bile and blood and as much as four grains in the whole liver evidence of the presence of antimony was also found in the spleen kidney muscular substance of the heart coats of the stomach and rectum the brain and uterus antimony was also detected in various stains on linen and articles of clothing which had been worn by mrs pritchard during her illness from these results dr mclaughlin concluded that mrs pritchard had taken a large quantity of antimony in the form of tartar emetic which caused her death and that from the extent to which the whole organs and fluids of the body were impregnated with the drug it must have been given in repeated doses up to within a few hours of her decease the result of the chemical examination of the various organs of the body of mrs taylor which was exhumed for this purpose revealed the presence of point two seven nine or a little more than a quarter of a grain of antimony in the contents of the stomach antimony was also found in the blood and one point one five one grain was recovered from one thousand grains of the liver dr penny who made an independent analysis found distinct evidence of antimony in the liver spleen kidney brain heart blood and rectum but no trace of morphine or aconite he also came to the conclusion that mrs pritchard's death had resulted from the effects of antimony antimony was found mixed with tapioca contained in a packet discovered in the house also in a bottle containing batley's solution of opium found in the prisoner's surgery dr littlejohn surgeon to the edinburgh police who was present at the post-mortem examination of both women gave his opinion that mrs pritchard's death had been due to the administration of antimony in small quantities and that continuously in mrs taylor's case he believed some strong narcotic poison had been administered with the antimony this opinion was further endorsed by dr patterson evidence was offered that pritchard had been in the habit of purchasing large quantities of batley's solution of opium which the manufacturers swore contained no antimony for the defence it was urged that there was no proof whatever that poison had been administered by the prisoner who had always lived on affectionate terms with his wife and that the motive suggested was of the most trifling nature that the stronger suspicion pointed to the maid-servant mary mcleod on whose uncorroborated statements the chief evidence against the prisoner lay the senior counsel for the prisoner 
mr clark concluded his address by stating that the crown had admitted there were but two persons who could have committed the crime the prisoner and mary mcleod mary mcleod's hand had been found in connection with every one of the acts in which poison was said to have been administered in the food the case against the prisoner seemed to depend on a series of suspicions and probabilities and not upon legal proof and upon these grounds he asked a verdict of acquittal the summing up of the lord justice clerk occupied three hours and twenty minutes on the conclusion of which the jury retired to consider their verdict after an absence of fifty-five minutes they returned with the following verdict the jury unanimously find the prisoner guilty of both charges as libelled dr pritchard was thereupon sentenced to death and was executed at glasgow on july twenty eighth eighteen sixty five there can be no doubt that he fully deserved his terrible doom End of chapter thirteen